Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a really fun video, or at least I hope it's gonna be fun, and that is a recommendation video of horror books based off the horror TV shows that you like. I've done videos like this similar where I've compared horror books to other horror books to give you recommendations, so I'm gonna have a playlist linked down below and in the cards, but specifically here I'm going to uh, give you ideas of books that, in my opinion, have similar themes or ideas to some of the TV shows that we all love to watch. So hopefully that all sounds good. I'm going to have timestamps down below. Otherwise, let's get started. First, let's start with recommendations for Dark Mirror, which is the horror sci-fi anthology that was on Netflix. And this is great because each story is self-contained and is totally unrelated to the last, but they all have these dark, creepy vibes. They take technology and twist them in some futuristic way that is just a little bit terrifying. And I've definitely read several books that have a similar bend, and so I'm gonna recommend a few horror or horror-ish books Books that gave me dark mirror vibes. First, I want to recommend a Ghoster by Jason Arnop, and this follows a girl who gets pulled into a whirlwind romance with a guy they begin dating and way too soon decide to move in together. However, when moving day comes along, she packs up her boxes, she gives away her keys to her own apartment, she goes there and finds out that her boyfriend's apartment is empty. The only thing left there is his cell phone, but everything else is gone, and she begins to wonder whether or not he has ghosted her, which if you're not familiar is a term for when someone breaks up with another person without actually telling them and just basically disappears out of their life. Unsurprisingly, this girl is very frustrated, so along with her best friend, they decide to break into his cell phone to look for clues as to what happened. And the story, in some ways, reads like a contemporary romance at the beginning, where they are recounting the relationship. It reads a little bit more like that thriller aspect to it, until the book takes a turn and definitely becomes horror. I happen to know that the author shares my love of the Dark Mirror TV show and actually co-wrote a book all about it, and you can definitely see that in influence in this book. I love the fact that he uses contemporary technology in his book. I have long said that I get so frustrated when horror movies and TV shows and books ignore modern technology and just everyone forgets they have a cell phone or if they do have a cell phone, the battery dies, etc. Instead, Jason Arnoff does the opposite and takes that technology and incorporates it into the story. And that's what works so well here is that you actually have, just like the TV show, technology taken to a place and things go horrible horribly wrong as you would hope they would in any good horror story. Next, for a Dark Mirror read-alike, I also want to recommend The Running Man by Stephen King. And this is set in a dystopian future where things have just gone from bad to worse, and we follow a character who is desperate to get money for his family, and so he agrees to go on a reality TV show where he has to run around from people who are chasing him down and trying to kill him. If he succeeds, or at least gets far enough, he will have money that will be given to his family in order to pay for their medical bills and so in his desperation he agrees to do this and then the story follows the adventure that happens. I really like this story. I can be hard on Stephen King but this story worked really well for me. I was impressed that Stephen King basically predicted reality TV before it was a thing. The story is absolutely engaging, it is fast-paced, it is tense and it definitely reminded me of a Dark Mirror episode because again it has that dystopian future and specifically there are at least a few episodes of Dark Mirror that deal with reality TV, and so I think that this one is a really good imagining of a future that felt realistic. I felt like the character had motivations that were clear to the reader from the get-go. You understood why he would be desperate enough to do such a terrible thing, and I really enjoyed it, so highly recommend. I feel like of all Stephen King's books, this one doesn't get a lot of attention, and I really do think it's worth reading. And along a similar line, for a dark mirror recommendation, I also want to suggest Villagence by Robert Jackson. Jackson Bennett. This is a sci-fi horror novella that is set in a dystopian future where America has become even more crazed about guns and in order to promote this to the public they have created a reality TV show where there is a shooter that goes out on the loose and then people who are supposed to be carrying their firearms on them 
are sent out to try to bring the shooter down. This book is hugely political, hugely topical, and I totally respect if it's not for everyone. Just like a lot of Dark Mirror episodes, you have to be in the right mental space to enjoy them because I've definitely had the experience watching episodes of Dark Mirror where we finish an episode and I just want to lie down and hug something fuzzy because I just feel so dark and sad inside. And this book honestly gave me similar feels. The author definitely does not shy away from his own feelings about gun control. So again, you have to share the author's opinions or at least be open to listening to them if you're gonna pick this up. But again, definitely gave me Dark Mirror vibes for similar reasons. That reality TV show, that dark future, felt a little bit too possible and was just terrifying. Next, let's talk about Stranger Things, which is also on Netflix. And this follows a group of boys as well as a girl that they come across and their adventures in the 19th 80s. It's a coming of age story, but also a horror story. It's one of those classic tropes where you have the kids versus the monster, the evil of the town. And at first they need to try to get help from adults, but the adults don't always believe them. It definitely plays into a lot of the classic tropes of the genre. And I think that's why it is so beloved. So I need to start by saying that honestly, if you enjoyed that, you really should try It by Stephen King, which while it's not my favorite story, it definitely is the inspiration for the show. The writer have come out and said that they were very much inspired by the book when they wrote Stranger Things. And then of course the updated It movie part one and part two was then inspired a lot by the cult following of Stranger Things and so that's why they moved up the timeline and made it more around the same time in the 80s. But anyway, I just want to mention that honestly if you do love Stranger Things it is worth checking out It. While it's not a favorite of mine, I absolutely see the influence there and it definitely could work for someone else. I also want to give a second recommendation, one that I personally enjoyed more, and that is December Park by Ronald Malfi. This is a story that follows a group of boys in a small town. There is potentially a serial killer on the loose, and the boys are investigating what is happening. Is there someone out to get the girls of this town and is killing them off? The story actually follows them over the course of a year, and so just like in Stranger Things, you get to follow the characters in different holidays and different time periods and seasons, and it's very much a story of the characters, so it's partially a horror story. December Park, honestly, is a little bit more on the thriller side of things. It doesn't really lean into the supernatural as much, but it definitely gave me similar vibes, that coming of age story, that young boys growing up, the nostalgia for an age that has passed, and if you enjoy those aspects of Stranger things, I really think you should give December Park a try. Highly underrated, one of my favorites of the authors, and I just cannot recommend it enough. Next we have The Haunting of Hill House, which is again on Netflix. Apparently that's the only streaming service I have here in Canada, so I'm sorry, I watch a lot of Netflix. But obviously you're going to expect that I'm going to recommend that you read The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson if you enjoy the TV show, but I will say that they took a really loose interpretation, and so I don't necessarily think that people who enjoy the TV show are going to love the classic. They definitely could, but I don't think that they are that similar. Instead, I actually want to recommend a horror thriller that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And this is a story that everyone who has read this book has said it feels like I'm watching this TV show. So it's very similar in terms of tone and particularly the story. So this story is told over two timelines, one being the present day where there is this girl who back when she was a child, her family bought this house house and soon after moving in they ran out in the middle of the night saying that the house was haunted. The father went on to write a book about it that became hugely popular. Now in the present day the girl is returning back to the house to renovate it, to sell it, to move on, but because she is there she is also investigating what happened because she was only a young child when that all took place and so she wants to know was there anything to it. She is hugely skeptical but this whole situation, the book, tore her family apart and she wants answers. The other perspective of the story is the diary entries of the father recounting, or rather his book. The other perspective is the book entries written by her father, which recount what happened in that day. And so the story flips back and forth between this past and present, but we know that we're not actually getting the full past, but rather the story as it is told by the father. So I like the fact that this story makes you question the reliability of that narrative, because you don't know if the father's account is true 
true or not. And again, I think that if you love the TV show The Haunting of Hill House, this book will have similar vibes. Certainly it is an independent story, so it's not a complete rehash. It will go in different direction, has a different ending, all of that. But they are very similar in terms of storyline, and I think there's a good chance you'll enjoy them both. Last, I want to talk about a book to recommend for those of you that love True Detective, which is a really gritty mystery series that leans into horror for sure, goes to some very dark places. And the book that I want to recommend that gave me similar vibes was Broken Monsters by Lauren Bucus. And this story is set in Detroit. It is in a time period when Detroit is really downtrodden and there's a lot of economic loss and the story is told over a few different perspectives, one being a detective or police officer who is investigating this serial killer case where there is a serial killer who is sewing the parts of an animal onto the dead parts of their victims. And so you have a person with animal parts, specifically I believe a deer that is being sewn onto their body and then they are being placed for display. And then the story is also told from the perspective of a journalist who is trying to make his way in the field and have a breakthrough so he is following this case. And the story is also told from the perspective of the daughter of the detective and eventually you got to see how all the perspectives come together. This is a book that until the very end it reads like a mystery, it reads like a thriller, and you will spend your time wondering why I'm putting it in a horror video. But you will get to the end and then it gets horror so you need to be prepared for that. If you're looking for a straight up mystery and you hate the supernatural, the ending might bother you a bit. But the story definitely goes to some dark places, it's gritty, the cases just remind me a lot of the TV show. Again, I think it just has a lot of that overlap, that gritty feeling, the gruesome nature. It's definitely not lighthearted. And I think if you enjoy the TV show, this is a really good book to check out. And if you enjoy the book, you might want to check out the TV show because of course these recommendations should hopefully work in either direction. So that is it. I've made it to the end of the video here and I would love to know of the books I talked about, which ones are you checking out? And I'd also love for you to recommend your own books that you think would be really good pairings for TV shows. Or if you'd like me to do a follow-up video to this, let me know what horror TV shows or movies you would like me to pair up with books and I can certainly take that into account and try to plan a part two to this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to give it a thumbs up, share it around online and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video and if you're new to my channel you can help me out by hitting subscribe and I really appreciate if you want to stick around I do read a lot of horror thrillers science fiction and fantasy otherwise I'll talk to you again soon thanks Kay bye bye